everyone, my name is Ashley or a gem tattoo. I am an illustrator and tattoo artist and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself while also going over the process of this marker drawing with you all. I actually did the sketch and baseline drawing in Procreate on my iPad Pro and then I printed out just on regular printer paper so I could transfer it to my marker paper using my Artograph light pad. All of the materials that I used in this video are going to be written out in the description below, but the marker paper I'm using is called the Express It Blending Card, which is made specifically for alcohol-based markers. I wanted my final piece to be around 8 inches by 8 inches big, and so I marked the paper so I could make the design as centered as possible, um, and I just did this with some light pencil, nothing too crazy. And then I taped the paper down to my light pad so that it wouldn't shift around on me while I was drawing. Sometimes I will do a light sketch on my marker paper from the light pad and then I'll ink over the sketch, but I decided to just go straight into inking in this case because I wanted to cut out some of that process and just make it a little bit easier for me to film. Now starting off, I did want to show you the footage of me lining this piece in real time, so not sped up, not slowed down, um, just to show you all how slowly I'm moving my hand so I can really try to get the cleanest lines possible. I'm trying my best to be deliberate about my mark making, and I'm also trying not to be overly concerned about if I mess up a line a little bit because I can always clean it up later with my white paint pen and potentially with some other marker. Um, this was probably the most stressful part about this for me because my instinct, as I'll go on to explain a little bit later, is to just throw away pieces um, when I mess up, but I really wanted to push and make sure that this was something that I was proud of and also something that I didn't just give up on. To line this piece, I am using a variety of sizes of Micron inking pens. Um, they're the Sakura Pigma microns and I'm using these because I have tested these before on this type of paper and this kind of pen doesn't pick up when alcohol based marker is layered on top of it. Um, even if it's applied really heavily or in a lot of different layers and some other types of markers or inking pens will get fuzzy or they'll start to bleed into each other when alcohol based or just regular markers are applied on top of them. And that's why I really always recommend testing your mediums on some scrap paper before you just jump into your finished piece with them. Um, on top of that, I also really highly recommend that that scrap paper be a piece of scrap from the paper that you're planning on using for the finished product, um, because that's going to make a really big difference on how your mediums interact with each other. And that way there aren't any real surprises when you go to your final piece. Microns and light pads or light drawing tables are something that you'll see a lot in tattooing. Um, it's often used for making tattoo designs and I found that this method along with using alcohol based markers is actually really similar to how I would work while I am tattooing somebody. Um, which is why I think I decided to start my YouTube with a piece that I made using these materials because it was a little more intuitive for me and I could still experiment a little bit because I'm not completely proficient in it, but it wasn't like completely starting over with something new that I had never used before. And I actually had to laugh a little bit in rewatching this footage um, of me lining this piece because the way that I'm holding the paper with my non-dominant hand is actually how I would normally hold skin to stretch it while I'm doing a tattoo. And here it's not really doing anything. Um, I think it's just helping me feel a little bit more confident in the lines that I'm pulling. And I think that markers and paper can smell your fear a little bit, so it's important to just feign confidence and uh, fake it till you make it, even if you're a little bit unsure of how it's going to go. Um, I've been tattooing for almost four years now, and I've been using my iPad for just over five years. Um, I got it, I think, my senior year of college. So I was doing just illustration stuff on that, and then I started doing all of my tattoo designs on that as well. Uh, that being said, lately I've been really missing playing with 
different mediums and I've also just been missing playing with my sketchbook and kind of just experimenting with things. I feel like all of the work I've been doing recently has gotten a little formulaic um, in that it's pretty much rinse and repeat like I'll design a tattoo and then I'll go to work and I'll tattoo it and I think it's still really fun. I really love my job but it's been a bit hard for me to make time to do some different things and I think that that's important because all of my art informs itself so I might find a way that I'm coloring or blending something with markers that I could then apply to my tattooing and it'll just make me a better artist overall. I really thought that starting a YouTube channel would be a good excuse for me to not only use up some of the art supplies that I've collected over the years, but I felt like it would also give me a chance to play and experiment and um, not just give me a chance, but also almost hold me accountable um, to continue to play and experiment in that way. I do find that experimenting can be hard for me because I'm one of those people who really struggles with um, perfectionism, I would say. And so it's hard for me to start things when I know that they may not be perfect or I don't feel like I'm particularly confident in what I'm doing. In fact, there were a couple parts of this piece, even just lining it, where I really wanted to start over, but I just think it's important to encourage artists, and that includes myself, to persist through their mistakes and try to rework or fix it if they can, instead of just completely abandoning it and starting over. And admittedly, it's easier said than done. Um, it's also a lot easier in digital because when you mess up a line, for example, you can either just delete the line or you can select one part of it and move it around or, you know, warp it a little bit to make it look the way you wanted to. Whereas a medium like marker, you have to really commit to the marks that you're making because they are somewhat permanent. The footage of me lining this piece alone was about an hour and a half uh, before I edited and sped it up, and so that should give you an idea of just how slowly I'm working on this. Um, in digital, there are some shortcuts that make this whole process easier, and because of that, a little bit faster. But I do actually think that the process of drawing on paper is a little more cathartic for me because I have to be more intentional about what I'm doing. And I'm so focused on it that it's hard for me to think about other things while I'm working, um, which I find really helpful for my mental health. Once I finished the line art, I took my marker paper off the light pad and then I taped it down to some cardboard, um, which is actually just the back of a watercolor pad that I had lying around. You can use that or you can use really any kind of cardboard or maybe some cardstock, but it depends on the weight of it. And the reason I do this, um, instead of taping the piece right to my desk, is because I have used alcohol-based markers before with the paper directly on my desk, and because of the way I use markers, um, I do a lot of layering with this medium, and they unfortunately bled right through the paper, and the alcohol actually pulled some of the finish up off of my desk and caused it to stick to my paper and it was really hard to get off it, it almost like cemented it to my desk um, so now I just tape it to cardboard or some other material to be safe it's fine if you're using it in a sketchbook that won't happen um, but I, I just don't know what it was about the finish of my desk uh, so just to be safe I would suggest taping it down to something first now I mentioned before that I did do the sketch for this piece on my iPad, but I also did some quick color studies on my iPad as well so that I would have some idea of what color story I wanted to use for the final piece. I do find that this makes it a little bit easier for me to make quick decisions about what colors I'm putting where, and it takes a little bit of the stress out of having to sit there and figure out um, what color the moon should be. and you know, what colors I have to put into the rest of the piece to make it all look cohesive. I really do suggest if you have the time to just do some quick color studies beforehand. It does make a really big difference in the process. I was leaning towards the two on the left and then the bottom right one I was really attached to, but I ended up going with the colors of the study on the top right. Um, I don't always recommend doing that. That was the first study that I did and those were the colors that I kind of immediately thought of. Um, I did the rest of them to push myself out of my comfort zone, but I, I really do feel like uh, the colors that I picked were good colors for this piece. But I'm glad that I tested out some other colors too, because I did find some interesting color palettes that I think 
I would use again, uh, maybe for something else. I will admit that I don't have too much experience with alcohol-based markers, so I unfortunately don't necessarily have a recommendation for um, which ones are the best ones, and I'm gonna try to steer clear of that in general because I think everybody works a little bit differently and what works best for me um, might not work best for you, and that's totally okay. Um, but I will say that of the markers that I've tried, I think the Ohuhu brush tip ones are my favorite, which is what I'm using here. Um, I've tried the Artist Loft brand, uh, the Prismacolor brand, and the Arteza brand. And I think only the Artist Loft brands were actual brush tips as well. Um, but I just prefer the Ohuhu. I think the nib is really nice and squishy and uh, they do have a lot of ink in them and it just makes it really nice and easy to blend things out the way that I like to blend them. So today I'm actually using the 120 set of Ohuhu brush tip markers and I'm also using the new pastel set of Ohuhu markers. I'm using probably about 10 to 15 marker colors from each of these sets. I find that having too many colors out ends up being a little bit overwhelming for me, um, pretty much for that same reason that I used the color studies earlier. Um, it just makes it harder for me to quickly pick colors. I really enjoy putting a lot of colors in my piece. So I think I kind of have to limit myself to make sure that it is as cohesive as possible. Um, I also almost feel pressured to use more colors than I had intended to use if they're all sitting right in front of me. And so in order to uh, make up for that, I sort of just select a few and leave them on my desk and then I put the rest of them out of sight so I can't even see what else is in there. I find that it's a little bit easier to make choices about where I want certain colors to be if I limit my color palette in advance. So in this case, I had a few different shades of values of yellows, teals, blues, and some peachy pink colors that I thought would just help bring this whole thing together. Now, much like the line work, um, I wanted to start the footage of this process in real time so that you can see the way I'm taking my time with these first few layers. With markers, it's really important to slowly build up colors and generally to start with that lightest color first and then work your way to the darker ones. So right now I'm focusing on getting that base layer down so I can build up on top of it. In most cases, you don't want the darker colors to bleed into your lighter markers or it could contaminate the ink or the nibs on the lighter ones. And there are some mixed media artists who use this to their advantage. Um, I don't see a purpose in this, so I try to avoid it. So I just put down my lighter colors first, and then I try to let them dry for a little bit and then go back in and sort of layer on top of them. It's a little bit hard to see in this video, but I am using a bit of a flicking or um, in tattooing, it's called a whipping motion to help soften up the edges of where I'm putting that first section of marker down and make it a little bit easier for me to tell where my lights and shadows should go. And I find that if I start doing this right from the get-go, it makes it a little bit easier to blend other colors on top of it because I don't have any like really harsh edges. I'm also not sure how easy it is to see it on camera, but the marker on this type of paper looks really dark and saturated when it's first laid down. And then it does lighten up a little bit as the marker dries. Um, so I try to avoid layering on top of it too quickly because it's a little bit hard to tell what the marker actually looks like until it dries. Um, so as I'm working on this, I'm both trying to build up value and I'm also trying to make sure that I'm using different colors to help round out the face, but I'm also trying to sort of bounce around the illustration a little bit um, so that I don't mistakenly make any one spot too dark or I don't put too much of one color in one spot. I find that sort of bouncing around the piece as I'm working helps make everything a little bit more harmonious. One thing that I really like about this paper especially is that it kind of doesn't show all of the streaks of the marker as I'm applying it, um, especially with those lighter markers. The lighter markers, it's really hard to see where I put the nib down and then where I picked it up. 
I am also trying to spend some time, you know, doing little circular motions and trying to make sure that um, all of those streaks and those marks are as minimal as possible. Unfortunately, when I start to get a little bit darker, you can see them, especially in those big flat areas like the moon. But I didn't want to keep overworking them and making them darker because you run the risk of those streaks being even more noticeable. And so I kind of just let them, or I, I just left them like that because um, it just wasn't like a big enough deal to me. Now, I know I could be using a little bit more of that chisel tip. Ohuhu markers are actually double-sided, so one side is the brush tip and then the other side is the chisel tip. But I think that the brush tip is a little bit easier for me to work with, and it's a bit easier for me to blend out with. Um, on that note, you also won't see too much of me using the actual blending marker, which is basically just like clear ink that helps blend two colors together because I find that it can lift up a lot of the marker that's already there. And in some cases it can end up in some random lighter areas that aren't necessarily appealing. Um, on the flip side, it can also darken some areas. And so I try to tread lightly with that. It's really not like a marker that I reach for too often. Um, instead, I really try to mix my actual colors themselves so like a light yellow with a dark yellow and then a dark yellow to a darker yellow um essentially i'm just using a lot of values of the same color to get that blended effect instead of actually using the blending pen to blend things together now for the moon and stars i started using the same yellow as i had been using for the initial lighter layers of the skin on the face and then I started building up some darker yellows on top of that to start adding depth and really make the moon seem like it was almost faceted. Unfortunately, I do think it got a little bit dark and um, a little too vibrant in the moon versus how light and cool the face was, which I think was brought out even more by adding the teal and cool blues into some of the shadows onto the face. I did try to combat this by adding in some darker peaches, some more warm colors, and then even some of that bright yellow from the outside of the moon. And while I do think that made the piece um, more cohesive and harmonious, I unfortunately also think that it strayed a bit from what I was thinking with the color study that I did. Uh, the color study was really loose and quick, but it was much softer. And I think that if I redid this piece, I would try to stick more to that um, because this is a little more harsh. I did at the end go back in and I thickened up some of the lines on the very outside edge with a fine point sharpie because I didn't have a micron that was quite as thick as I wish it was, um, not quite as thick as I would normally line things when I was tattooing or when I make my other illustration designs. And I didn't do the sharpie at the beginning of the illustration because sharpies are also alcohol based and when mixed with the Ohuhu brush markers, especially on this paper, um, they ended up getting that feathery, um, blurry look that I was talking about earlier. They kind of like blended in with the other markers and in some cases even lifting up off the paper. And that was with just like a light, you know, little brush of the marker. So I knew that they just weren't gonna last um, with the kind of coloring that I do with these. And at the very, very end, I went in with my white fine point Posca pen and I started adding some little highlights and little sparkles to the face while also going in and fixing up some little bits of the line work here and there that had some bumps in him or, you know, just weren't super smooth. Um, just little things that I ended up not being particularly happy with. And I really wanted to add all of these little sparkly dots to the face to, um, you know, make her look sparkly, make her look like she was glistening, but also to help lighten this illustration up again a little bit because I really did feel like it got away from me at some point. I felt like it um, became a little bit darker than I had wanted it to. And so I was trying to find a way to kind of pull it back just enough that I would feel happy with it moving forward. Um, but I was also trying to control myself and not put too much white in it because I was worried about overworking this piece as well as not uh, finishing it as much as I would like to. And I also ended up using some of that really light icy blue to add this little like tear mark on her face. Um, not for any particular reason except that I felt like 
Uh, her face looked just a little bit plain to me, and this is a theme that shows up in my work pretty frequently, and I, I just wanted like one more little thing that tied it all together and, and made it seem like a piece that I made, um, or that I would make. I think one of the most important parts of this YouTube channel to me is going to be um, how to make the feel and style of my work show through across all different mediums. I feel like that's something that I've really struggled with because, you know, I change my style a little bit um, when I'm using marker versus watercolor versus gouache, and I think some experimenting and some consistency is really what I'm looking for. That being said, overall, I am pretty happy with how this piece turned out. Um, I haven't done something like this in a really long time. I really don't use line work in my traditional art um, the way I would with my tattoos or my digital illustrations. So it was a nice little experiment and a real challenge to use line work on paper. Um, it's definitely something that I would like to get a little bit more confident in and have a little bit more of a steady hand with. Um, but it felt really good to get out of my comfort zone and experiment just a little bit with something that I'm not super comfortable with. I think I probably will end up redoing this digitally because I actually do like this design quite a bit and I think I would like to use it for my icons on my various social media pages and I know that I can do it exactly the way I want it done digitally. Um, but if I do that, I think I will try to record it as well. And I'll save that for a later video here because I think it could be really fun to see that and the way that I would approach that versus how I approach this and um, how I used markers to do this piece. I just think it would make for a cool side-by-side -side comparison. Well, I think that's all from me for today. I'm really not sure when I'm going to be trying to upload yet. Um, I don't want to promise anything super consistent because I am still trying to figure out, um, you know, my editing software and the software for my voiceovers, but I'm hoping that I can start uploading at least every other week. I think my end goal would be to upload every Friday. Um, so hopefully we can work towards that together. And you can let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this from me and what kind of things you would like to see from me in the future because I am struggling a little bit with some ideas, so I think that would really help me out. Thank you all so much for joining me for my first YouTube video. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please like and subscribe. Let me know how you felt about it in the comment section below. I am really looking forward to seeing you and drawing with you and hopefully just getting out of my comfort zone and making some fun art with you guys. So no matter what time of day it is, I hope you're having a good one and uh, I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye.